Hello everyone! Introducing a new poly ship for the channel. Yay! It's getting slightly out of hand with all the poly ships, but hey, I fell in love with them. Thanks, Hannah. So I hope you will like this one too, because it's very close to my heart. As always, special thanks to my lovely patrons. You are keeping this channel going. Despite just finishing with practice, Dasha couldn't stop the occasional shiver running through his body as he walked down the street, heading home. It wasn't even that cold outside, and he made sure he wasn't going out sweaty, even if it meant waiting almost half an hour for everyone from their team to leave the showers. Yet he still felt like he just walked out into winter. He pulled the jacket closer to his body when another shiver made goosebumps appear on his arms. Damn this weather. He startled a bit when his phone buzzed with a new message, but it was only a response to his earlier text that he was heading home. Home. It was still a bit strange to call the apartment home after living with his sister for so long, but he soon found out he liked the sound of it. It made him feel all warm inside, a feeling he almost forgot throughout the past years. He smiled at the screen before he hit the phone and sped up, despite his legs feeling like being weighed down by lead, already looking forward to taking a proper shower and getting something to eat. And a couch didn't sound that bad either. The atmosphere was tense the moment he entered the hallway. Not in an aggressive kind of way, but rather as if he somehow teleported into the time of the Wild West and was about to witness a shootout between the sheriff and some vigilant. Slightly confused, he tidied his shoes and headed to the living room. However, the sight that appeared in front of him left him with more questions than answers. What are they doing? Enoshita, so far sitting pretty comfortably among the numerous pillows on the couch, craned his neck over the couch backside, giving him a soft smile as he reached for his hand. Dasha only hesitated for a split second before he let his hand slip into Enoshita's. Light jolts running through his skin where Enoshita's fingers touched him. Being stupid, as always. But it's pretty entertaining. He gave Dasha's hand a light squeeze. I'll come home. Dasha returned the smile with one of his own, but then his attention fully shifted to the two men sitting by the table, staring into each other's soul as if they were trying to set the other on fire with just their glares. Truly a Wild West duel at its finest. He resisted the urge to talk at them and hesitantly sat on the armrest next to Enoshita. Don't tell me they argued again. Enoshita snorted a short laugh. What else? I told you they're stupid. Hey, we can still hear you. Yeah, this is an important decision. Right, so you could finally give up and admit I have a superior taste. You? Oh, please. You wouldn't recognize good food if it landed in front of your nose. How dare you? Dasha couldn't help the quiet chuckle escaping his mouth as the two started to bicker again, his heart slowly melting the longer Enoshita caressed his hand. I see. What is this about? Yuji brought some snacks and threw good grumpy because there wasn't anything he likes. Ah. Don't mind them, they'll be all buddies again in ten minutes. He gently tucked on Daishio's hand, bringing him a bit closer, but not close enough to cause any potential discomfort. A gesture Daishio was eternally grateful for. How was practice? Everything good? There was a hint of concern in Enoshita's voice, as always when he asked him about something happening without their presence. At first, Daishio couldn't figure out why that was. But the longer he spent with his boyfriends, he realized it was just Enoshita's in-core caring nature speaking. It was heartwarming. Yeah, everything went fine. Some guys are just a bit nervous about the matches next week. I hope they aren't overworking you. He furrowed his brow, running his fingers lightly along Daisha's cheek. You look tired. Oh, really? Maybe because of the new schedule. It's been a bit rough. It wasn't the full truth. They both knew it. 
All three of his partners knew about the nightmares that plagued his sleep occasionally, usually when his mind was too stressed to focus on blocking the memories out. He was sure Enoshita knew the last few days were like that. He wouldn't bring it up otherwise. But before either of them could say anything else, a loud tornado in the form of Terushima rushed to him and threw his arms around him. I'm sorry, Sugu, I didn't even welcome you. Welcome home. Asha almost melted in Terushima's arms, allowing himself a moment to enjoy the warmth his boyfriend's hug always brought into his soul. It's fine. You had an important discussion. Terushima clicked his tongue and threw a glare at Tanaka standing a bit aside. If someone could admit defeat, it would be much easier. Says the one who lost. I only lost because I wanted a hug. Alright, enough squabble, you two. Tanaka looked like he wanted to argue further, but then just shrugged, his face softening when he looked at Dashio, giving him a tender smile of his own. Hey. Hi. He glanced away, unsure what else to say or do. Despite being together for almost four months now, he still didn't know what to expect from Tanaka on occasions. He was an incredible man, there was no doubt in Dashiell's head about that. More caring and considerate than most people he had met in his entire life. And to his own surprise, Dashiell soon found himself falling even for the Raider Captain. And yet, there were moments when Dashio couldn't shake off the feeling that Tanaka just didn't want him around. He rarely went for any sort of touch, though if that was out of consideration or because he just didn't want to, Dasha wasn't sure. The most contact being an occasional bump of their shoulders. It was so different from how he acted with Enoshita and Terushima, it made Dasha wonder and worry. Sugu? Everything okay? He snapped out of his thoughts, finding Terushima looking at him with concern. I'm fine, I just thought about something. Terushima squinted at him, and Dashio flinched when he put his hand against his forehead. You are warmer than usual. The little note immediately turned the other's attention to him, and Dashio cringed inwardly, the urge to hide growing on strength even though he knew there was nothing and no one to be scared of. I thought so too, actually. Are you sure you're okay? Dasha bit the inside of his cheek, trying for a reassuring smile. I'm fine. It's probably just from practice. I'll go take a shower and it's going to be good. Neither of the three seemed fully convinced by his explanation. And while it warmed his heart there were people concerned about his well-being, he didn't want to unnecessarily add more worries to his boyfriend's minds. He pulled away and got up, blinking a few times when the room swung with him. Suguru. I'm fine, really. He squeezed Terushima's hand before letting go completely, immediately missing the warm touch, and grabbing his bag along the way, headed to the bathroom. He shivered the moment the door closed behind him, feeling like he just entered a walk-in fridge. Still, he took off the remaining clothes, avoiding looking in the mirror with every last bit of willpower he had. The cold getting even worse when he stepped on the tiles with his bare feet. Hoping to shoo the cold away, he let the water run much warmer than he would normally, the bathroom soon filling with steam that only succeeded in making it hard to breathe. It's fine, just hop in, then out, it will be fine. But even as the hot water poured on his skin, it was to no avail as the chills continued to run through his body the steam making him lightheaded. His chest heaved as he tried to make a quick work of drying himself and dressing up again, and then he no less than stumbled out of the bathroom, almost knocking over one of the flower pots in the hallway. Damn it. Before he managed to stabilize himself, a wave of nausea hit him like a truck. His head spun, the ground swaying under his feet. He didn't even realize what was happening when his knees gave up under him, sending him to the floor. Then, strong arms wrapped around his waist and pulled him back on his feet, letting him lean against the muscular chest. Careful, take it slow. Dasha's breath hitched, 
but the price soon overpowered the initial startle. Thanks. Tanaka hummed by his ear, apparently not planning to let go of him anytime soon if he could judge by the slowly tightening embrace. Or nothing. But you really don't look well. He laid his hand against Dashio's forehead, frowning. Yeah, Yuji was right. I'm pretty sure you are running a fever. Huh? Chica? Can you bring something against fever? For Guru's sake. I'm not. It's... It's fine. No, it's not. You are burning up. I'm surprised you didn't faint yet from the shower. What were you thinking, taking a hot shower with a fever? I... He fell silent upon seeing Tanaka's expression, a sudden wave of weakness almost making him fall again. Tanaka pulled him closer, his voice turning much softer than Daisho had heard ever before. Come on, let's get you to bed. Actually, you don't have a choice, because I will carry you there thrown over my shoulder if you won't go. Dasho took a shattered breath, the words sending chills down his spine. But this was Tanaka who said them. His boyfriend. There was no need to be scared. Alright. He let Tanaka slowly guide him to the bedroom, leaning into his side more than he would like. But Tanaka didn't seem to mind even encouraging him in that by wrapping his arm around his waist. A moment later, he was huddled in the blanket, the cold now biting into his muscles with new force. That bad, huh? A calloused, warm hand patted his head, making him shiver from a completely different reason than cold. It'll be fine. We'll take care of you. Asha opened his mouth to protest, to say they didn't have to worry about him, but the words got caught in his throat when Enoshita appeared in the doorway, a little box of pills in his hand and concern written all over his face. Terushima followed right behind him, barely taking time to put the glass with water on the bedside table before he jumped on the bed too and trapped Dashio in a firm embrace. You're such a dummy sometimes, you know? Yuji, let him take the medicine first. And it wouldn't kill you to ask before you hug someone when they are ill. Terushima pouted, but listened and sat up, taking all the warmth with him. Mind you, cuddles are good against illnesses. My mom always said so. Yes, but Suguru isn't you, remember? Everyone has different preferences when it comes to hugs. Dashio couldn't help the tiny smile curling his lips when Terushima hung his head, looking like a scolded puppy. He stuck his hand from under the covers, giving his boyfriend's hand a weak squeeze. It's fine. I don't mind. Terushima's face lit up immediately, his smile so bright one could easily go blind. Enoshita rolled his eyes, even though there wasn't a grain of annoyance behind it and handed Dasha two pills and the gloves. Take this. It'll make you feel better. Dasha forced himself to sit up and chuck down the pills, shivering when the blanket slid from his shoulders. Terushima was by his side again, wrapping him in both the blanket and his embrace as he helped him lie down again, and Dasha had to pull on every last bit of his willpower not to cry. Having three people taking care of him was overwhelming, pushing his mind into overdrive to think of all the whys and hows. But all of that was cut short when Anoshita caressed his cheek, giving him one of his soft smiles reserved solely for his boyfriends. Try to sleep now, okay? One of us will wake you up when the dinner's ready. You too, come with me. Terushima snuggled closer to Dasha's side. I'm on cuddling duty. Yuji... I'm useless in the kitchen anyway. I'll do the dishes afterwards, I promise. Tanaka shook his head, his sigh changing into a short chuckle. Fine, I'll take the cooking. With that, he brushed his fingers against Dasho's hair one last time, his face softening impossibly, before he and Enoshita left the room with a soft click of the door. Exhaustion fully settled in Dasho's bones and if it wasn't for the violent shivers, he might have fallen asleep there and then. 
He blinked in surprise when one of their fluffy blankets wrapped around him, the rest of the cold disappearing when another set of strong arms sneaked around him. Don't worry about anything. Just go to sleep. I'll keep watch, I promise. Dasha could seriously cry. He bit hard on his lip, taking a leap and entwining their fingers together in front of his chest. Thank you. Terushima's hair tickled on his skin, but he definitely wasn't going to complain. Not now, or ever. Not when he had the most amazing people around him. For nothing, love. Now try to sleep, okay? You'll be fine soon. You'll see.